this is into the fire. I'd like to welcome to Into the Fire, NRL Gun, the superstar from the New, New Zealand Warriors. Amazing individual, possibly the nicest athlete on the planet, Georgia Hale. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Georgia. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Now, there's a fair chance I'm not going to care about what you say in this interview. I'm just going to love hearing your cool out. Thank you. Kia ora. <laughs> <laughs> You're an extremely gifted sports person who excelled at lots of different sports. What made you settle on rugby league? Oh, so rugby league, so when I was growing up, I played lots of different sports and I made some really good friends from those codes and they dragged me across the footy and I have not looked back. So first touch of the ball, first tackle, I was hooked. Dad was super stoked and the rest of the family because they're mad leagueies. So I've played since. Nice. Were your parents very sporty? What sort, what sort of youngsters were you? Yeah, um, parents were definitely sporty. I have an older brother and a younger sister, so they were sporty too. And there were a lot of fights and brawls out on the um, old family trampoline. So yeah, <laughs> that was pretty good. So yeah, grew up playing a bit of netball, touch tag, pretty much anything I could get my hands on. Mum and dad are pretty um, athletic, always kind of kept fit, played sport kind of back in their heyday, as they would say. Um, so yeah, kind of naturally found my feet in sport. Yeah, and you're really good at it. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go straight to 2015, when you represented New Zealand for the first time in a loss to Australia. What was that moment like to reach the top of your sport at such a young age? Can you remember the moment you ran out on the field? I can. I don't know if I was more nervous about performing the haka or playing the game, but yeah, a bundle of emotions, um, especially when you've got a goal in mind. So mine was to make the Kiwi Ferns and I'd finally um, made it to kind of the pinnacle of our game, which was super exciting. So I was really, um, yeah, really looking forward to debuting. Um, when I did, I don't know if I had much of an impact in the game. I was still pretty fresh and young, so I don't remember what kind of I did to help the team out on the field, but um, thoroughly enjoyed my experience and have been really fortunate to be in the Kiwi Ferns since. Yeah, it would be awesome. Now, the next game I want to talk about was the game against Australia in 2016. An Anzac Day test clash against the enemy across the water. You won and you were named the player of the match. That must have been the greatest day ever, in one of the biggest games in front of a great crowd. It was. You definitely always remember beating Australia. It's a pretty good feeling. <laughs> Not going to lie. Um, and we were on Australian soil as well and it was Anzac Day so it was a huge occasion. So yeah, it was an amazing feeling to get the win and also to be awarded that um, that Man of Woman of the Match award as well. So yeah, a very special um, moment in our milestone. And it's been a while since we've been in Australia like that so we hold that one quite closely to our hearts. <laughs> You were actually named New Zealand Player of the Year in 2016. That must have been a pretty humble It was, yeah. I guess I'd been in the Kiwi Fern system for a little while. I was um, had had a few experience. I'd played a few different games and got to travel. And um, yeah, I had a lot of opportunities. And I guess that was really the pinnacle of the game. I guess when you play, you're in a team sport, so you don't really think of milestones like that. You'd rather win with your team. But I guess to win for me personally, um, yeah, it was a huge achievement. It made my family really proud, which made me really happy. <laughs> yeah. You were named Vice Captain of the Ferns in 2017 World Cup, but were admitted for the final. Why were you dropped? And were you determined to never let that happen again? By the way, you lost. <laughs> yes, no, I definitely remember that, um, but I, I can honestly say today I'm better for it. Um, I think I got a little bit complacent there, I probably wasn't playing my best footing, um, but resilience came into play, I definitely um, bounced back from that, I went away, I did some work, um, kind of looked at what I could focus on again, um, re-switched and changed my mindset and came back better for it. Um, yeah, so it wasn't the greatest moment, it wasn't great losing the World Cup, it wasn't great uh, being dropped, but yeah, definitely better for it, stronger for it, and had some good milestones since. Yeah, but that's why I don't drop you. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do it. 2018 marked the start of the New Zealand Warriors in the WNRL. That must have been a proud moment. Lining up for their debut year might have been better than being at the Broncos though. Yes, yeah, no, it was a great debut year, even though the Broncos did win and have won since. Um, but the Warriors have been my family club, so I remember being about your age, sitting at Mount Smart, waving a Warriors flag, eating a punnet of chips, cheering on the boys, so it was always kind of a dream of mine to play for that club. When the NRLW got announced and they, they said that the women's would be a part of it, I was really stoked to be one of those players to put on the Warriors kit, and even though we haven't yet won a premiership, it's something we can look forward to. I think you might win one too. I hope so. <laughs> 2019, captain of the Warriors. The plaudits for you just keep coming, don't they? At just 23, the captain. What a thrill. How did you like that? 
Yes, that was a huge honour. Um, one, it's a huge honour to be a player, but two, to captain the side. Especially being so young and you've got girls that are in your team that are more experienced, a little bit older than you. Um, yeah, I felt very privileged to captain the side. And in our first year, we had a very um, strong, powerful, passionate captain. So kind of to follow in her footsteps, yeah, it was a huge privilege and I've taken a lot from that experience. Yeah, you would have. Okay, the 2019 World Cup's World Cup Nines final against the foe Australia again. And guess what? You don't get dropped and you win. <laughs> what was it like holding that trophy up? Yes, that was a lot better World Cup experience for me that time around. So, got to play, um, got to hold the trophy up. Yeah, it was amazing. It was a great celebration. Um, we'd gone into that tournament not really thinking much. We hadn't had much time playing nines. We were more focused on our 13 side game. Um, but yeah, it was it was a great victory. We beat Australia on Australian soil. So yeah, there's lots to celebrate about. <laughs> I can't celebrate that too much myself. No. <laughs> Unless you're a King Fern supporter. <laughs> I don't know if people know, but you mustn't sleep, given that you do everything in the community that helps people. Not sure if there's anything you don't do. What are some of the programs you do to help others? Remember, we can't be here all <laughs> I definitely do sleep and I definitely need it. Um, but yeah, really lucky. I've done a lot of work in the community. So back home in New Zealand where I'm from, I've done a lot of work in that space and I've been fortunate to travel in um, with Rugby League as kind of the bus that I've jumped on. That's been the tool that we've used to drive different community programs in spaces like Australia, out here in Adelaide, which I'm very fortunate to do. Some of the programs have been very rugby league, like today we're doing a skills clinic, um, and other things have been working alongside charity partners, working in schools, so I've had a lot of different experience which has been very rewarding. Yeah, it has. Now, you won Young New Zealander of the Year in 2020. Being so humble, what sort of honour was that, and how were you told you had won? Yes, oh my goodness, that was another very special milestone. Um, so I was asked to come down to this um, huge, very um, special awards night and I um, and I was told you know if you'd like your family to come they can and they were very um, quick to jump at that opportunity so we booked a table and we went to the um, New Zealand of the Year Awards I didn't think anything of it I just thought it was a huge honour to be in the room let alone named um, so yes that was a very special moment and it was very special that my family could be there as well to celebrate with me yeah it would have been it would have been a great moment COVID sucks no not <laughs> six sucks and it has hit everyone so hard but for you poor girls in New Zealand, it meant you had to quarantine twice just to play. How was that whole experience like? And how did this season go? Yes, I'm very used to quarantining. So our first quarantine experience, we came over, there was five girls from New Zealand. We were the five that could travel. We didn't have too many commitments back home, so we were quite eager to jump on a plane, especially through COVID. Um, we quarantined on this beautiful island. I don't actually know if you'd call it quarantine. It was probably more a holiday. We had a training field, we had a gym, we had a pool, so we could do all of our prep. So that was my first quarantine experience, which was amazing. Um, and then we went out and we played our NRLW season. So there were the five girls from New Zealand, and then we joined forces with a few Australian friends, uh, which we now call our teammates today. So we were able to play in the NRLW competition. And then I moved up to Queensland and I had to quarantine again. So I'm pretty used to it now. <laughs> yeah, well, at first I thought COVID sucks. It doesn't sound like you had too much of a bad time. <laughs> Could have been worse. <laughs> Could have been worse. Okay, a couple of quick questions. I've seen pictures of your partner and has he bench press cars? <laughs> oh, he would like to think he does. I don't think so. <laughs> Seriously, your food bills must be huge. The incredible Hulk has less muscle. <laughs> yes, the food bill is quite good, so it's good I'm up in Adelaide, so I don't have to worry about the food bill back home this week. <laughs> yeah, that is good. Can you do the hucker? I can do the hucker, yes. I've done quite a few, actually. Um, and the Kiwi Ferns, we were very fortunate. We did one at the Warriors, so a lot of girls in my team, um, their background is Māori, which is um, our First Nations people back in New Zealand, so they've taught me a couple of huckers, actually. Nice. <laughs> do you think that New Zealand would do better if they weren't called the Ferns? Maybe something like Poison Ivy would be better. Oh, I do like that name. I'll take it back to New Zealand next time I go and I'll let them know. Let's see if it can change. <laughs> Last thing, can you please say fish and chips for me? Fish and chips. That's pretty good. <laughs> I passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> you passed. Okay, now you're at the top of your game and you're an elite athlete. I'm going to give you something that you only athletes I interview can use. A very special thing to do when you get that try. It will take the moment to the crowd. It's a celebration for a nation and you can use it. The end of the fire.
Oh yeah, straight away. <laughs> Yay! Awesome. Very cool. Well, Georgia, you're a superstar on and off the field. I heard you say if young girls looked up to you, that that would make you proud. They certainly do that, mate. You're genuinely the nicest person, and the sport need and the sport needs people like you. Keep being here. Thank you. Thanks, Georgia. Awesome. So cool. Thank you.